On January 8, 2011, a gunman opened fire in Tucson, Arizona. His target was Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who was shot in the head at point-blank range. To stop the bleeding, EMTs used a special bandage that puts pressure on wounds and prevents infection. First responders said the bandage saved Gifford's life, and it's one of many medical breakthroughs that got its start in Israel. Israel has one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Actually, our life expectancy here is about four years longer than the U.S. So if anyone wants to come move to Israel, on average, you're going to add four years to your life. From fighting cancer to giving sight to the blind to making the lame walk again, Israel is leading the world in medical innovation. Every day, millions of Americans use some kind of medical treatment that came from Israel. From Sambucol, a cold and flu medicine made from elderberries, to amniocentesis, used to detect prenatal abnormalities. There's a wireless laser that will someday replace the Denistril and the pill cam, a tiny camera and a capsule. It takes pictures from inside your colon, eliminating the need for a colonoscopy. Millions and millions and millions of these procedures are done every year. What if you could make them painless, pain-free, and non-invasive, and take a lot of the risk out of that procedure? That's a classic Israeli solution to a problem. In the field of medicine, finding a cure for cancer is one of the biggest goals. And although a full cure is still in the future, Israeli scientists are making huge advances. The news is full of stories about dogs who can smell everything from epilepsy to cancer in their owners. So one scientist took that idea and refined it. If the dogs can smell cancer, we for sure can do it in a little bit more sophisticated way. We can communicate with the device much better than we can communicate with the dog. Hossam Haik developed an early warning system for cancer. The nano artificial nose can detect tumors before they're even visible on x-rays, just by analyzing a patient's breath. The device can give the results within five minutes to one hour, more or less. Many diagnostic tools require to swallow a radioactive or active material into, uh, in order to make the diagnosis possible. We don't expose it to any risky x-rays or beams that might make cancer by themselves. The artificial nose is still in clinical trials, where the accuracy rates range from 86 to 97 percent. And it's also being customized to sniff out other diseases as well, like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and multiple sclerosis. Our ultimate vision is to bring uh, this device in an inexpensive and very portable way to everybody, whether these people live in the Western countries or they live in the third world, because we believe that we have to fulfill a little bit democracy. Other Israeli scientists are focusing on the treatment of cancer, and they're doing everything from burning tumors with thermal heat to freezing them with liquid nitrogen. One doctor is even developing a vaccine for cancer. The Emucin vaccine trains the body's immune cells to attack a specific molecule found only in cancer. And since only the cancer cells are targeted, the vaccine has no side effects like chemo and radiation. With one shot every few months, the body's immune system will keep it under control. We're just educating the immune system to do what it, you know, would try to do itself. We're not inventing anything. In the first clinical trial, the vaccine successfully triggered the immune system in all 15 patients. You will see in the future, I think we enter a field which is very attractive and we just scratched the beginning of it. I think we have a lot of more things to come and I'm very uh, encouraged by what I've seen. In 1829, the introduction of Braille revolutionized the way blind people read and write. Today, Israeli inventors are taking that revolution a step further. For people with limited sight, 
there's a new device called the OrCam. It's a pocket-sized computer linked to a small camera that clips onto your glasses. The camera sees what you see. And when you point your finger at something, the OrCam will read it for you. Everything from menus to street signs. And for those with total vision loss, there's Project Ray, the first ever smartphone for the blind. With the tap of a finger, users can make phone calls, send texts, and even surf the web. While these inventions are giving blind people more independence, another one is actually restoring their sight. A company called NanoRetina is focusing on people who have lost their sight from macular degeneration. They've created the bionic eye, an implant that provides users with grayscale vision, a big improvement over total blindness. Necessity is mother of all inventions. And Israelis sometimes tend to think outside of the box. And if there is an obstacle, we do not hit our forehead at the obstacle, but we go around it. We found a solution. One of those solutions is giving new life to people who were told they would never walk again. I couldn't understand why wheelchairs are the only solution to, uh, for, for, for a paralyzed person. In 1997, a meat gopher was paralyzed in a car accident. And since then, he's been on a mission to put the wheelchair out of business. So he designed something called the Rewalk a brace that uses motors to help paraplegics walk and even drive a car. Ironically, Gopher couldn't use his own invention, since he's a quadriplegic and the device requires the use of the arms. But he soon found a veteran who was more than willing to try it. When the doctor told me that I'm lucky to be alive, but my injury would leave me paralyzed, everything became dark. Radi Kayof is a former Israeli paratrooper who was injured in South Lebanon. In one of the rehabilitation centers in central Israel, I met Amit Gofer. He told me that he had developed a device that helps paraplegic in my condition to walk. I didn't believe I'd be able to stand up. After I tried it and the device made me stand up, I was amazed. My daughter was three years old back then. She looked at me and said, Dad, you are tall. That made my day. The bottom line is seeing the families. It is very exciting. They see their beloved one stands, then you want to cry. This is the first time I was really excited. Roddy started using the Rewalk six years ago. And since then, the device has gone global. In 2012, a young woman named Claire Lomas used the Rewalk in the London Marathon. She walked the 26 miles in 17 days, earning her the nickname Bionic Woman. It's a moment I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life. I dance four times a week, and I love it very much. And I knew that, I, that I'm not going to stop just because I am diabetic. Shai Barshira is a dancer, a student, and a type 1 diabetic. She is also a pioneer. Shai was one of the first people to try a new Israeli medical device, the artificial pancreas. It's still in the experimental stage, and right now it's just a laptop with a series of sensors that monitor the patient's blood sugar. Eventually, the laptop will be replaced by a microchip and an insulin pump. Dr. Moshe Philip is one of the developers. I promised my patient many times that uh, one day they will get rid of their diabetes. So despite the fact that we are not able to cure diabetes yet, we would like to enable our patient to live their life without thinking of their diabetes all the time. You have to understand type 1 diabetes, especially during childhood, is something that keeps you busy the entire day. It's there all the time. 
Dr. Philip oversaw clinical trials for children in Israel, Slovenia, and Germany. But Shai was the first one to use the device at home without medical supervision. Each time that my levels drop, it gives me a very, very strong alarm. It tells me that I have to eat right away. And if my levels go very high, it fixes my levels. It calculates itself how much insulin I should take, and it gives an automatic order to my pump to give me that insulin. And I'm all balanced, even more balanced than I was when I went to sleep. And that's amazing. I think we are going to change the life of our patients. And this is the entire idea, to bring back the spontaneity to the life of our patient, to free them from being busy with thinking about how to control their blood glucose level all the time, and especially during the night. I feel there is so much effort made to help the diabetics feel like, you know what, you have this disease, but don't worry. We're trying to cure it. We're trying to make the treatment better, more comfortable, and we'll get there. Feeling that I help other people too, it gives me the strength to keep on. If I am a part of something big, I feel that I'm not alone in this business, and it gives me a lot of hope.